Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's um, Hingham School Committee, uh, the meeting of September 9th, 2019, our first school committee meeting of the official school opening. Um, please note that this meeting is being recorded and televised by Harbor Media. If anyone else intends to audio or video record this meeting, please let me know. Seeing none, all right, thank you. Uh, item 2, 2.1, is to approve the minutes of the school committee meeting held on August 12th, 2019. I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes oh, of this. Sorry, Just yes. Yep. Oh. Oh, no, that's okay. it. Right. We'll do that thank and you. then we'll take, no problem. Go ahead. I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the school committee meeting held on August 12th, 2019. All right, second. Eliza, any discussion? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. Um, I think the time that we adjourned is different, is wrong. Um, I think we adjourned around 940. Uh, where did it say? Eight. Sorry, I'm looking to see. Yeah, and the, the video, I went back to the YouTube video of it, and it was two hours and 40 minutes, and we started right at 7, so. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds right. It was longer than. It was long. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. I also have two things. Sure. Did you have anything else in this? Um, just a spacing thing, but okay. I can tell Carrie. Um, on item 8.4, um, just wanted to clarify, and I've sent this to Kerry. Um, the salary negotiation subcommittee weren't the ones that narrowed down the applicant pool of the attorneys, um, and I think I explained this. Um, it was, it should read, the salary negotiation subcommittee voted a screening committee of Dr. Austin, Dr. La Bilwa, John Ferris, and Liza O'Reilly, who narrowed down the applicant pool to three firms. Um, and then on 8.5, um, since you noted two of the things that I said, there was a third thing that I also said that I would like to have reflected in the minutes to read. Um, she also asked if the subcommittee had requested contributions from any booster groups to help fund the project. Carlos De Silva <coughs> committed to following up with the booster groups. Is that? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. Um, all right, is that it? Any other discussion on the minutes? All right, so um, a motion was made and seconded to approve, and do we want to make amend it to? I make a name? motion to um, amend the minutes as read. Second. Oh. All right, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great, thank you very much. All right, um, item three, questions and comments. The Hingham School Committee encourages community engagement and welcomes questions and comments as agenda items are discussed. In addition, we have set up aside up to 15 minutes at the start of the meeting for items not on the agenda <coughs> that folks may want to comment or discuss on. Discuss. Is there anyone here this evening who wishes to bring any information? All right, I will not read the rest of this then. Um, item number four, superintendent's report. So Dr. Thank you Austin, very much. you are on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we'll start quickly with um, just an update on the East Elementary flooding issue. I am happy to say that we have passed all of our inspections. We're ready to go to school tomorrow with all students. So kindergarten will actually be going tomorrow to East. And I want to thank everyone from our from our business office to our, our facilities management to our custodial staff who and our teaching staff who did a phenomenal job of uh, getting that school ready and, and ready to go and to thank you to uh, Principal Tony Keating. Thank you very much for the work you did in, in preparing that and communicating effectively with parents. Uh, I think it's uh, as smoothly as it can go. Uh, it went and, and we're ready to go to school tomorrow with all students, uh, including kindergarten. As you re might remember or recall, we started last week on time with the fourth grade, but had to take an extra few days for the kindergarten because the, the bottom floor was the floor that took more damage. But uh, they've done a phenomenal job and, and really have prepared 95% uh, of those classrooms. There's still some painting to do in places. They'll do that at night or on weekends or on vacations. Um, I think we have a couple of smart boards to put up. Yes. Um, correct. John, is there anything else you want to add to that? Um, no, just some cabinets. Uh, they, we have the, uh, the we have uh, replacement <coughs> cabinets coming, but those are 14 weeks out. So the old one is uh, in there for now, but we'll 
be handling those when those new ones come in. So that's good news with East. Um, and the next thing I have is an opening of schools report, which is kind of traditional to me. I'm not sure you've done it, but I really wanted to. I asked our principals to come tonight and thank them for their time um, to come tonight and, and just give you a, a brief few moments of, of uh, some of the things they've been doing. Uh, as, as for the opening, I thought that would be helpful for the school committee to hear. Um, and the only one I think that we don't have here tonight is Mr. Swanson, who's not here, and he did email me. So I'm going to pull it up so I can read those comments, um, if you don't mind. So the high school, almost 1,300 students passed through the halls of Hingham High School last week. The high school opened the year with its largest enrollment in many years. Fortunately, those students and their teachers had access to the entire building since the long upstairs hallway, known recently as the fire wing, uh, had been reopened in time for the start of school. I don't think we've officially renamed that. Um, a large freshman class was introduced uh, to life at Hingham High School during a full day of ninth grade orientation on Thursday, August 29th. Our newest high school students were welcomed by school administrators and other staff members at the opening assembly, had a chance to go through their schedules and meet with all their teachers, found their lockers, which is obviously one of the most difficult things for them, uh, met the advisors, interacted with older peer mentors, enjoyed a first ever class barbecue, and signed up to clubs at the annual clubs and activities fair before heading home. Each of the three classes held a full class assembly last week during the first regular week of school. At those assemblies, students heard from their class advisors and class officers, as well as school administrators. The tone has been set for what we expect will be a fun, memorable, positive, productive school year. It promises to have many highlights, including freshman parents night tomorrow night, open house on September 26th, homecoming on October 12th, the fall concert on October 22nd, and the fall musical Mamma Mia in late November. Just to name a few, we're excited to be underway and we look forward to moving our school ever closer to an amazing, its amazing potential. And I will say that I attended uh, a good part of the uh, freshman orientation day uh, and, and Mr. Sanchez does a phenomenal job of, of welcoming students and making them feel at ease as they uh, start their journey. So congratulations to them. Now I'll work towards, uh, I, I didn't really think about this as I put in order, so I apologize for that, folks, but uh, hang a middle school. Good evening, and thanks for having us all. We uh, all sit in the back pretty much sharing the same uh, feelings. It's been a very, very smooth beginning to the year. Um, it's very nice to start with this, the, uh, the stu students all feeling relaxed and ready uh, after summer vacation. Hingham Middle School welcomed just over a thousand students um, through our doors last week. Um, if you've never been to the middle school on the first day of school, I highly recommend it. Um, seeing a thousand nervous kids walking through the door, um, you know, the sixth graders looking like they, they don't know which way is up, but by the end of that week, they all are confident and know exactly how to manage themselves in that building. I think a big advantage that we have is the very early start that the middle school has, starting at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, many of our students didn't realize summer vacation was over until about lunchtime. So, um, you know, as they, as they get used to that schedule throughout the fall, um, we will see them coming uh, ready to learn every single day. Um, we had, I think, really a nice smooth opening because of all the transition activities that took place last spring and over the summer. With our move up day that's held in May and our uh, walk arounds where students can come with their schedules and tour the buildings independently in late August. And the, uh, the visits that Ms. G hosts uh, with our students, Ms. Gustafson invites kids in over the summer, drop in with their parents and she gives them a, a, the personal guided tour of the school. All those things help to reduce the anxiety of our newest students, our sixth graders. So we think that that really made a big difference in starting the year off on the right foot. We're excited about our kind of new teachers, right? We've stolen some teachers from other schools throughout the district. We have Miss Manning, who is now one of our Spanish teachers who came from East. Um, we stole Jen Gonzalez from Plymouth River for another Spanish teacher. Amanda Harding we took from South. So we take a, a, something from all of our friends to make the middle school a little bit better. Um, we're very excited to have them join our team. Our new programs, we're really thrilled to have in place the uh, language academic home base, which is shaping up to really meet needs of students that um, we are really looking forward to keeping them um, 
engaged in the greater life of the school without having too much um, instruction taking place outside of the general education classroom and our inclusion facilitator is already getting into classrooms and helping teachers um, co-teach to a greater degree so um, you know we're working on our plans for start with hello week which is coming up September 23rd through 27th as are the other schools um, but overall it's just been a really nice start to the school year we're very excited to get things going so again thanks for having us here this evening all right East Elementary I know, uh, like I said, Dr. Austin kind of gave a quick update, but I will say we were very fortunate to have a phenomenal response to our flooding problem. You know, on Sunday when I got the phone call from Katie Hartman, I was up on the North Shore, um, but she told me everything was well under hand. So Service Master was on site within hours, very quick cleanup. They were, uh, did a great job in kind of being on top of everything that had to be done to prepare the school for the students. So we had a big push to get the fourth grade classrooms ready. Those are the ones that we were kind of first concerned with because um, we wanted to make sure we got our fourth graders in. So um, teachers came in on uh, Labor Day to finish preparing their classroom. We had a fair number of other staff who just volunteered their own time to come in and help the teachers get the classrooms ready. And same thing, <coughs> preparing for kindergarten. So our kindergarten teachers were doing final prep today as they finished unpacking, putting everything back. Um, so we are all ready to welcome our kindergartners tomorrow. Um, great support from the parent community, the families, um, all willing to step up and offer to help us prepare the building to get ready. So once again, a truly team effort, and it was great. Um, as for the rest of the building, we welcomed our students. Uh, once again, that um, we have almost 30 new students, new families coming into eSchool. Uh, we have two new MECO families that joined us this year. So we started that, um, we invited all of our new families to uh, a new student tour last week in August. Um, we divided two groups. I take half, our assistant principal Becky K6, the other half, give them a full tour of the building. So when they come back, they have an understanding of where they're going. We do our open house um, right that week before school starts, the Thursday, open the building up. A little bit complicated this year because we still had contractors on site who were still working to pay the buildings. And they were once again, very cooperative with us uh, as we asked them nicely, like, well, I need to have students go down here. And they said, no problem they shifted their work so that they could allow the students to get to the classrooms, meet their teachers, meet their classmates before the first day of school. So all went great. We did welcome our preschoolers um, on Thursday. Uh, we have 61 preschoolers coming in this year, um, varying times, varying schedules. Very smooth start for our preschoolers. Um, if you have a chance to come over and visit, I'm very proud of our preschool program. Uh, they do some phenomenal work. Um, we have two new staff members this year. Uh, we actually stole a first grade teacher from PRS, so Melissa has been very generous. <laughs> Uh, we had an increase of enrollment, so we added a fourth, uh, first grade section this year. Jackie Miss Callister came over, and she is off to a great start, part of a great team. Um, and then we did have to replace the Spanish teacher that uh, Derek stole. <laughs> so we were lucky enough to find a phenomenal uh, teacher, Christina Haurigi. Hope I said it correctly. Uh, she was a long-term sub when she was here before at South School, and she has been part of the Milton Public Schools for the past three years came highly recommended with a lot of uh, support when I talked to her principal. Very sad to see her go. So we were very lucky. And once again, we're off to a great start. Tomorrow we will com be a complete building. We welcome 81 of our kindergartners in to get the, uh, the school year off to the official start. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Friends at Foster. Hello. So, we at Foster also had a very smooth start. We had our open house and welcome back party sponsored by our PTO prior to the start of school. We had many families who attended and were excited to see everyone coming through the hallways. At our first PTO meeting, we welcomed a new board this year. So we had a lot of members turn over in the PTO board. So. We have still a great amount of involvement from our parents, which is exciting, and so we look forward to working with our new board members and our kindergarten family. So we have our coffee and Kleenex PTO meeting on the first day of kindergarten, and um, it was well attended. We have four new staff members. We have Charlene Egan is a special education teacher. Kate Scully is a new reading specialist. We also have 
Alyssa DeLuca, who is coming to us from South School <laughs> as well. Um, and she is teaching fourth grade for us at Foster and was a fourth grade teacher at South. And we also have Danielle Morrissey, who is our uh, long-term adjustment counselor substitute. Today, we, um, we are already back and running into our groups and meetings. Today, we had a meeting with our green team parents, as well as a representative from Holly Hill Farms. So we are continuing to do some of our collaborative work with farming and uh, collaborating with Holly Hill Farms. And we're working to look at this year and what our plantings will be. So some of that work was happening today. We're excited about that. And in addition, we are planning our bike and walk to school day on September 27th. So that is going to be on Friday, September 27th for Foster. We have a change for school pictures this year. We are doing our school pictures during the day. Previously at Foster, school pictures were done in the evening. So this year we're changing it to during the day. And that will take place on the 26th. Um, as well as our curriculum nights are planned for the 18th and the 25th. This year, part of our theme is I am a masterpiece for our school, as part of our school improvement plan. And so we're really focusing on individual students and how their, what each individual student's strengths are and how that builds into a masterpiece. And we are also, uh, just to speak of enrollment, we have increased enrollment as well. So last year we started the school year at 480 students and this year we are um, currently have 493 students but have two new enrollees uh, within that will occur this week. So we will be up to 495 to start the school year. And we are preparing for the visit from MSBA tomorrow. Thank you. Piaris. Good evening, everyone. I'm just passing down a bookmark um, that we created to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Plymouth River School. We look pretty good for our age. <laughs> so the theme, um, just going off of that, the theme for the year will be honoring the past, celebrating the present, and building the future. And we have a committee that will develop activities throughout the year, including some uh, fun trivia from the past and um, things that students might wish for the future. So we're riding that theme for this year, and I um, think it will be an exciting year for that. We happily welcome two new staff members. We have Dr. Bulger, um, our new school psychologist, who we did not steal from anybody. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I hunted for him. And um, then we have Kendall Ingram, our new Spanish teacher, who um, has many years' experience, and she has been fabulous so far. We also welcome 15 new families. Um, we had an open house the Thursday before school started. And um, the open house is, we usually do a K to 5 open house, but for half an hour before everybody else comes, we welcome our new families and give them some, um, before the big crowd comes, some private time to either have a tour or talk to other new families before integrating everybody else. Um, so the open house is very successful. The energy, the smiles, that will kick anyone back into back to school fever. And um, it was really just a great day. The kids were excited couple tears but that was only from the parents no kids <laughs> which is always nice um, we have some great new additions um, thanks to our collaborative efforts with the scouts um, I love when former students contact me and, and want to give back to PRS so we had Ryan Trinchette he created a sensory path on our playground um, which really came out nice if you haven't had a chance to stop over or I did post some pictures on Facebook check it out it's really came out great um, it's a sensory path and then he also um, there's a very hungry caterpillar and it has a scavenger hunt all over the playground so the kids love it um, Jenna Burnett built a gaga ball pit and that is new and very exciting everyone wants to use that and um, Eliza Bastis is starting a community service club after school for her Girl Scout award. In, um, in two weeks I'll be bringing 81 students to Yarmouth Port for the annual Cape Cod field trip. So that is still going and the kids are very excited for that. 
And coming soon, um, I think Tony or somebody, Derek might have spoke of it, the um, Start With Hello Week. All of the schools will be participating in that and um, creating some activities to really create a culture of inclusion and valuing each person as an individual. Um, and also, if you don't follow our Facebook page, if you follow it, I did post a video from the first day of school just with some fun photos from that day. Thank you. Leslie, can I ask you a question? Sure. The uh, sensory path that you spoke of mm -hmm. is just terrific. Uh, and I'll, I took some pictures of it, and I'll send them to the members of the committee. But, this, but I'm not, I know where it ends up, but I'm not sure mm -hmm. where, where, what that door is, where it starts. So describe its location for the members of the school committee, it's and then they'll see some photos of this mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow. It, it's on the back playground um, What's behind that door the that it um, what, what basketball is? court down near the third grade. Okay. Um, but it's out in back of the, between the soccer nets and the basketball court. And it was newly paved, so it was a nice surface for him to paint on, too. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. It's such an honor to follow all of my well-spoken colleagues. Uh, you think of all these things you left out as soon as you hear how great they are. <laughs> so I just want to say we've had a wonderful start also. I'm liking and likening it to a symphony, but I think that's happened in all six schools. Um, it certainly began beautifully with everybody doing their part. And uh, we also, we have 514 students who we welcome, and many new families. We have 15 new families, and we also have two new Metco families, which is wonderful. And we had a nice, did the, a very similar thing. We had the half hour where the new families came first, and then everyone came in our amazing, very involved PTO. And we're so lucky in this town. I think we all would say we have amazing, very involved PTOs. Uh, ran a beautiful kind of welcome back. Everyone could go around the building and then also go out on the playground, and that's so helpful. And before that, we had many opportunities as well for the kindergartners and any new students who wanted to come and walk through, and certainly any people who couldn't make that Thursday, they were welcome to come any other time. Uh, this year, we did steal a staff member, too. We <laughs> stole a, um, a fourth grade teacher who's now a fifth grade teacher at South from Plymouth River. So it's nice to know that we share and people move around and they're all so fantastic and we let each other know how great they are and if there's a, a, a place for somebody somewhere who has wonderful talent, it's great that we hold on to them. <laughs> so we stole Melissa Hamrock from Plymouth River. So we now have another Mrs. Hamrock at South School and I know many of you remember the former Mrs. Hamrock who also worked at South School. So it's kind of fun. And we also have a new adjustment counselor who's coming to us from Malden. And she's already hit the ground running, so that's great. Her name is Vanessa Breyer. And we had a last minute surprise in that we had a part time leave, of actually a full year leave, in first grade. And we were lucky enough to have Mrs. Stephanie O'Brien, who I know a lot of you know, um, step right into the role. And it's like she never skipped a beat. And I think everyone in town knows who she is. So that's worked out really, really well. So uh, to continue on the symphony the prelude of course was day one which went really well and I would agree with Melissa we didn't have many tears just a few parents and I always used to say to my fifth graders when they would go up to the sixth grade where you all do a great job transitioning them I would say it'll take you a day or two but give your parents two to three months especially if you're the oldest in the family so you know we were counseling a lot of parents on the sidewalk but the kids were absolutely great and what I love seeing and I'm sure you all do too is that the older children are so willing to help the younger children children and help them feel better, help them get off the bus, make sure they're sitting, make sure they find the door to go in, and everything like that. And it was very exciting for us, I know Tony loves this too, to welcome back preschoolers. So much so that I got a little sidetracked today at the end of the fire drum when I was supposed to be going out front to talk to the firemen and I saw all the preschoolers lined up. We have the Kids in Action Preschool and they're just adorable and we thank Jackie and her staff and we're so happy to have you back. Uh, it's just great. It's just wonderful. So. They're just so adorable. All children are. They're so beautiful. Big smiles on their faces. Everyone's taking part in our symphony. Um, I want to thank the parents who sent us enthusiastic students who are so ready 
uh, to be back with wind beneath their wings. Get it? The wind instruments. Uh, I want to thank the staff. They've played an amazing part in preparing for a successful start. Maintenance, uh, custodians, and summer staff at South 220 Central Street, school committee, administration. They have pulled strings to get us up and running. And then the bus drivers, of course, and the cafeteria staff and paraeducators, they continue to be the percussion of the day because they keep things moving right along from beginning to end. And finally, the teachers are the brass, um, the brass section making the curriculum come alive. And that's already happening, I know, in all the schools. The kids are very excited about what they're learning. And like the other schools, we also have themes, and I think all our themes are very similar. Uh, we honor all children, all types of learner. And uh, at South School, we have the bee as our mascot, which scares my husband because he's allergic to bees, but that's okay. Um, and we always say, you know, be happy. Be respectful, be responsible, be ready to learn, and A number one, and I know we all preach this, be kinder than necessary. So that is one thing we talk about all the time, and of course we've already jumped into that with the kids, and we like to use the village, um, the village analogy as well, and to respect all learners, and of course working, of course, towards humanity and equity. Um, as I said, be respectful, be responsible, be ready to learn, and be kind of the necessary. We all work hard, like in all the schools, teaching children habits of mind. And of course, I think we all believe in this as, as well, teamwork makes the dream work. And we always talk at South about how when the birds fly south, they fly in a V. And something I only learned about 10 years ago is that, a lot of you probably knew this already, the head bird constantly changes. And therefore, the, the bird at the top of the V, there's, the group is 71% more efficient. So we talk about that all the time. And we say, V to you, when someone solves a problem or comes up with a solution, because of course, no one person can do that all by themselves. So those are all our themes. And of course, don't want to disappoint you, Dr. LaBilwa, I know that we're all also working on spreading toolbox. And we've already started at South School on the breathing tool, because that's very important the first couple of weeks. So that works out great. And and we look forward to doing the other 11. Actually, we added a 13th tool. It's the humor tool. So I'm sure everyone does a humor tool as well. So we're looking forward to the 13 tools. And we're looking forward to so many things. Uh, our, our building is 1948. But the, I'm, I'm sorry, our school was built in 1948, but our building is 20 years old on Veterans Day weekend. So we're going to do some fun 20 things um, this year as well. And we're looking forward to our two back to school nights. One of them's this week. We do three grades each night, and one is on the 25th. And on Friday, which I scheduled it on Friday the 13th, fingers crossed everybody, but that is my lucky day. That's another story in my life. And uh, we're having the third grade bike rodeo. We're having pictures next week. We're looking forward to our harvest party and all kinds of things. So we thank you all very much. It's been a great, it sounds like it's been a great step for everybody and we thank you for all your support. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank I'll you. just say uh, one more time how much I appreciate all of your principals who uh, have worked so hard to make the opening uh, fabulous. Uh, I did get a chance to get to every one of the schools. Uh, I visited countless classrooms, um, countless, and went through and, and uh, spoke to them. And if I didn't visit the classroom, I, we either welcomed students or we had them leave uh, for the day so, or said goodbye to them. So fabulous work for all of you, and, and thank you. And thank you for coming tonight. I know it's late. You've all been here for over 12 hours now or, or so. So you're free to leave after this if you want to. You don't have to stay. Um, you will not offend us if you leave. So thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's really wonderful. Thank you. That was a nice tradition to start. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. So next on my uh, list, and, and thank you for indulging in that. I know it's a little bit probably new, but I no, really think it's great. important for the community to see the fine work they do on uh, an opening. Uh, opening enrollment. Um, in your packet, you have an enrollment sheet, and it's changing. And I, and I would still say it's still changing on a regular basis. I will say that um, there is a typo, um, and, and I'll go to the bottom of your sheet where it says total district enrollment. We think that's correct of 4185, I mean 84, I'm sorry, 4185, which is four more than we had in June. That's as of today. We're still working this through. Um, our pre-K is actually down um, from 85 to 71 this year. I would anticipate that will come up a little bit uh, as we move through the year. Um, out of district placement is a typo. It is not 41, it's 51. 
Uh, and so, and we're still working on some of the logistics of our audit district, and that we've had some students move in, et cetera. So we're we're gonna we're gonna work on that number again and give you a more solid number in a couple of weeks. Um, our vocational uh, students are up by um, from five to nine now, so we're at nine this year. Uh, so the total of whom um, Hingham Public Schools has programmed under our fiscal responsibility uh, is actually 4316. If you take the 10 that was miscalculated so it's it's two less than last year as of right now um, so I will bring another number in two weeks I think we'll have a much more solid number as we continue to work through any of the students who might have left or or come in uh, just a, a recap and and say thank you many of you attended our leadership team meeting on the uh, 26th of, of August um, at the, uh, the country club here in Hingham a uh, wonderful day uh, and which we, the, the, the focus for our work this year uh, are, are really three things that are overreaching for us, or overarching, sorry, not overreaching, overarching goals of ensuring equity, um, ensuring safety and, and security of our buildings, and of course continuing academic excellence. Our administrative team, our leadership team will be working and continue to flush those out to, act, to, to put action steps to those things. In fact, we're beginning that work this week. Uh, and so we'll continue to update on, you, on those things. Um, as we talked about equity, um, uh, Dr. Libilowa had actually done a little of the opening uh, piece on equity, and I think he's ready for that now. Sure. I'd be happy to. Yeah. Um, I might just need you. You want this? Um, please. Yeah. There you go. I think you. I think it's right here. Dr. No problem. We heard that the conversation, and I thought it was important for the community to hear. And sure. Dr. Lillewa agrees, so we wanted to hear, have more folks hear about this. <laughs> Thank you for uh, allowing me the opportunity to come and talk a little bit about the opening message that we gave to our faculty when they returned last Wednesday. Uh, we began uh, my portion of the presentation by reviewing the mission of the district, uh, which was to provide challenging and comprehensive educational programs in a safe and supportive environment, enabling all students to develop the knowledge and skills necessary for success as local, local and global citizens. Um, we, we reiterated that this mission really takes the collective, collective effort of um, our faculty, our students, our parents, our, our, our community on a broader level uh, each and every day uh, to help us actualize uh, what's outlined here in our mission. Uh, I then uh, wanted to uh, present to the faculty sort of a celebration of successes um, from, la from last school year. Um, the range of professional development offerings that were offered to them. We, got, we have continued to receive a lot of very positive feedback about the quality of our professional development program and the opportunity, excuse me, <coughs> that they feel to be engaged um, in topics that are of professional interest to them. Uh, we also talked about living through some really profound uh, infrastructure issues, as you know, the foster evacuation, um, the Hingham High School fire, I did joke with them and talked about the East Flood and that if you're biblical, the locusts are doing any day. <laughs> uh, just because of the, the amount of things really that we've had to manage um, uh, relative to the infrastructure and the, its impact on learning have been profound. Uh, we also talked about year two, really completion year, completing year two of our computer science uh, immersion initiative. Um, we, we are going to be presenting um, actually in just a couple of months at the Joint Mass Association of School Committees and Mass Association of School Superintendents Joint Conference down on the Cape. Um, and we completed uh, year two of our rollout of CS and year one of our computer science immersion program. Uh, we launched uh, our social emotional, our Hingham tiered system of support, social emotional um, uh, focus. Uh, I noted that we had just completed a presentation down at the Mass Association of School Superintendents on our multi-tiered model, our rollout, and how we have been able to make the progress that we had made um, uh, to the other uh, school district leaders from across the Commonwealth. 
uh, tier one piloted through K to five, and that tier one was the rollout of our toolbox curriculum um, that rolled out, as you know, K through five, and actually um, this year is uh, K through six in the district. It just rolled up to middle school this year. We also talked about the piloting of tier two, including the universal screenings and then small group interventions, and that occurred across the entire district in grades K through 12. We completed uh, grade four rollout of the, of the standards-based report card. Um, so we're making progress there. And uh, actually grade five just kicked off uh, last week. Their work toward uh, a redesigned um, report card that effectively communicates um, progress towards standards as opposed to a grade in a particular subject area. Um, we uh, have expanded our curriculum mapping and hope to begin to publish by the end of this year our first set of curriculum maps to the public, which articulates the scope and sequence of the learning skills and expectations across all content areas in grades K through 12. Um, we also um, completed the revision of our bullying prevention intervention plan, and we are about to launch that probably in the next two weeks, a public comment period for the public to then give us feedback on our revisions. Uh, we're in the process of preparing a Dear Community letter that sort of updates the community on a, vari on, on a variety of subjects and begins to recruit uh, participants for some district-wide work that we're doing. Uh, we also implemented a revised district curriculum accommodation plan across the entire district. So I really felt it was important uh, to frame the year with uh, a really, uh, so looking back on our successes coming out of the last school year. We then turned our attention to looking to the work to come. So once again, we're going to be offering a wide variety of professional development offerings, and we are incredibly proud and support, uh, proud of the, of the support we're able to give our, our, our educators through our uh, professional development model. We'll be looking ahead to year three of our computer science initiative, including the expansion um, and uh, integration of the standards across even more curriculum areas. Uh, we'll be looking at full year one rollout of our multi-tiered model for social emotional learning. Remember last year was our pilot, and now we're moving into full implementation mode. This fall, we'll be undertaking um, uh, the, the development and, and rollout of the Hingham Tiered System of Support academic arm. So as you know, the HTSS looks at a multi-tiered model in both academic as well as social emotional um, areas. While the social and emotional is now up and running, we'll be turning our attention more, atten more um, focused toward our academic interventions in reading, writing, and mathematics. We'll be looking at a, really a redesign of what's currently known as the RTI program across the elementary grades uh, and looking at a rollout in grades six through eight. Um, so the goal would be by the winter to provide to all of you an update and proposal of what we're um, hoping to have funded through the budget uh, in terms of a K through eight academic intervention model. Um, so more to come on that and we'll be forming that group in the coming weeks. So if anyone's listening in the community, we are actively looking for volunteers to engage with us in this work. Um, so the more, um, more people involved, the better um, the outcome is. Right. Um, we'll also be looking at critically at the structure around our elementary uh, uh, parent-teacher conferences, and we'll be forming a teacher working group to begin to examine um, when they fall and sort of what the content should be. Right now, they're sort of there because they've always been there. They don't necessarily align with report cards. We want to be thoughtful about when we're actually providing that um, time to our community and to our faculty. We'll also be forming a district-wide technology committee to um, update and uh, sort of produce a new K through 12 technology plan, as well as um, a group to help us oversee the rollout of a new district website, which is projected to roll out on, on January 1. Uh, so more to come on that front, uh, but this, all this work will begin uh, in the year to come. The other piece that we also discussed with the faculty um, was uh, sort of above and beyond all of this, uh, a real district focus on um, equity. And so we presented this to the faculty as a starting point for an ongoing conversation that began really that day at convocation and that we hope to continue uh, throughout the academic year. Why are we now talking about this issue of equity? First of all, we have seen a shift in the broader national culture um, relative to kindness and perspective taking and tolerance of their, other people's points of view. We've also had a number of critical incidents here in the district uh, which have led us to um, a level of understanding that some of our students uh, don't necessarily feel safe. 
uh, that there have been some issues relative to race and relative to gender, uh, religion, uh, that we feel are critically important for us to address head on. Uh, we want to be seen as forward thinking in this area and not reactive. And so the feeling has been up to this point uh, that we have been dealing with sort of critical incidents as they emerge, doing the best we can to educate. Um, the volume of those incidents have led us to sort of be more reflective to say maybe there's something more going on here, right? So let's press pause, take a collective view, and talk about what we need to do to ensure that all of our students feel safe and secure in our schools. And the final part of why now is it's directly connected to our mission, right? A challenging and supportive educational environment for all of our students, right? It's very important to us that every single child who comes to school with us every day uh, feels safe within our four walls. Before we could really get into talking uh, critically about equity, we, we first began with a definition. Um, and so, that, again, the sort of the dictionary definition of equity refers to a justice according to natural law or right, specifically freedom from bias or favoritism. Well, and that's sort of the Merriam-Webster uh, definition of what equity is. When we think about it in terms of educational equity, it's generally referred to as fairness. Uh, right, for all people who are participating. The challenge here is what exactly then does fairness mean, right? Fairness may not, is that fairness of outcome? Is it um, equity or fairness in terms of resources or resource allocation? Or is it relative fairness relative to uh, achievement and academic outcome? Uh, these are real questions, right, that as, as you begin this conversation, these other variables really do present themselves to be um, addressed and analyzed as we engage in this work. Uh, we showed th the, from the Interaction uh, Institute for Social Change, uh, Agnes McGuire's uh, graphic, which I'm sure you've seen before, which tries to differentiate for folks the difference between equality or equity, right? Equality is the concept of giving everybody the same. Right, so everybody's going to get the same box to try to see over that fence, regardless of um, your physical size, right? Where the content of equity is less about giving everybody the same, and it's really focused on giving everybody what they need to be successful, right? Um, when we talk about educational equity, we're really also talking about um, the conversations really anchored in two key concepts, right? There's two key dimensions of educational equity. The first is fairness. Again, ensuring personal and social circumstance do not prevent the attainment of academic outcome or potential, right? So that is in educational equity talk, how we define fairness. So it's not a quality of outcome, it's not a quality of resource. It is ensuring that personal and social circumstances, right, so that the individual things going on with me have no bearing on my attainment of my potential, right, that, that in spite of all the things going on in my life, when I come into our schools, into our classrooms, um, I am giving an equal shot of attaining the same potential as anybody else who's in that same classroom. The other key concept or dimension is inclusion. Inclusion is not necessarily related to the concept we think of it, for example, in special education, right? Inclusion in this instance means setting a basic minimum standard for education by all students, regardless of background, personal characteristics, or location. And we did, um, just to give credit where it's due, the, the, this um, research really came out of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Um, and it, it, they're one of the, um, one of the major organizations uh, working toward educational equity. <coughs> equity in ed education um, also talks about, um, it differentiates for us vertical versus horizontal equity. So horizontal equity is, the, is relative to the equal treatments of equals, where vertical equities refers to, vertical inequity, um, or equity rather, um, refers to the equal treatment of unequals. Right, so the challenge really belongs in vertical equity or inequities that exist when everybody is treated the same regardless of personal circumstance or need. And 
the, well, the other thing we have to keep in mind is that this is not something relative that's really unique to the Hingham Public Schools, right? That, that um, what we know is equity is impacted by socioeconomic factors, by race, by gender, by disability. Um, so there's, there's a lot of key variables here that we know we have to be thoughtful of when initiating our conversation and work relative to equity. Um, just to sort of, I wanted to step back for a minute and, and help the faculty see that this is not a, an issue unique to Hingham. When we look at um, countries where uh, there are, there, there is a, um, where there is large gaps in wealth, distribu wealth distribution. So example, there is large um, categories of haves and large uh, categories of have-nots. Um, that would be really high um, income inequality, right? Where there's these big gaps in sort of the, the socioeconomic variable that we know invariably impacts equity. The United States, for example, is over here on the right. Uh, when we look at the, and when this data is then analyzed against um, average math and reading scores, what we see is that countries with high income equality uh, perform consistently lower than those countries where there is low income equality. So I, I'm not suggesting that, we, you'll often hear um, educational researchers, there's always a uh, focus on Finland, right? What is Finland doing, the number one in the world? What is happening? One of the major things that people don't necessarily talk about when they talk about Finland is that culturally it's, a, it's very low income equality. So there, we don't have have and have nots, in, to the same extent rather. I'm not going to suggest there aren't any, but they, the, the extent is not the same. And so there's nothing we're going to be able to do in our work that's going to fix this issue. But it's important to set the tone that there are going to be variables, right, that we have no control over. They are what they are. Um, so what is our response to that going to be? Right? So what is the work we're going to do to ensure that income equality, for example, plays no role in our students' experience here in the district? To look at it another way, here is, um, again, from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Um, this looks at scores on the PISA test. Um, and it, what it looks at is the, um, the differences between the academic performance of a student from a low uh, socioeconomic en environment to a high socioeconomic environment. And the darker the color, the higher the difference between the performance of kids from, high, um, from environments from low socioeconomic backgrounds versus high socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, in the United States, you'll notice there, as, as well as most of Western Europe, right, uh, most of developed uh, Western Europe there, um, have uh, really high differences in achievement that are related to socioeconomic status. So now what, <laughs> right? So there are, we know that there are going to be variables that we can't control. We know that there are going to be, that there are going to be um, sociocultural issues that we're not going to be able to, to completely control for. But we need to begin the work to begin to systematically look at our district to determine those places where we can begin to make differences for kids. We're going to begin with an examination of design. We're going to be looking at our academic selection and offerings and ensure that the offerings that we're uh, providing to students are reflective of the students at which we're trying to teach. It, could it be a structural issue? Do we have issues in our leveling systems, right? What, what is going on in our structure? And could we make some improvements or revisions in structure which may help us systematically address issues of, of equity? We're going to be looking at our practices. Um, one of the key practices of, of equity, and this will come up later when, we get in, when I come back to you uh, sort of mid-year to talk to you about the work that the Academic Task Force has been working on, is are there universal interventions and supports for all kids in, across multiple content areas? Do we have ho strong homeschool partnerships? Are we in equipping and enabling our parents, for example, to help with homework? Are we, are, are we giving them the skills and knowledge necessary to be supportive of their student when they come home? We're going to be, have a real focus on our own celebrations of diversity. Are we actually celebrating and embracing, or are we just wearing the pin for the week because it's what everyone else is doing? Um, and finally, we're going to be initiating really challenging conversations of privilege. 
um, with our faculty and staff um, to push their thinking and to encourage a broader perspective as we begin to take on this work. We'll also do an examination of our resources. We will work to recruit a, a, a personnel um, a workforce that is reflective of the students that we're teaching. We'll also be critically examining our funding allocation and sources to ensure that there is equity in allocation of funds and resources across the district. All of this work will occur for what purpose? And that is uh, uh, really building uh, what we're referring to as a roadmap to the future. Our goal is by June of 2020 to be back to present to the committee uh, the district's equity inclu and inclusion plan for launch in, in September of 2020. And that work begins um, now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. That is a, a lot to tackle, we understand. Um, and we appreciate it, though, because it is very timely. and. Um, and if any district can do it, this one can. That's right. So thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Oh, I'll go back in here and put myself in. Okay, next up is a, I just want to tell you about the uh, Metco social event, uh, which was the ice cream social, I think, on uh, the 15th of August. And several of you attended that. Um, but a fabulous night. I've heard great feedback of uh, Hingham had a tremendous um, a uh, number of people there, uh, administrators, school committee members, uh, and that was mentioned actually, I think, in the Metco uh, newspaper as well. Yeah, um, the newsletter. Glad to have us there, and and uh, I think it's really I'm important sure. to meet the families and 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 to put families at ease about coming to school here. So really important. So I'm sorry that really went haywire, didn't it? That's it. Be just uh, plugging in again, maybe. That was great. That was a very, um, that was a really great event. Um, a few of us went to it, and it was great. We did have a chance to meet with some families, both existing and some new, so it was nice to chat with them. Um, and I know, don't know what that means. <laughs> That's never happened before. Um, okay, unplug that for a minute. And um, I know um, Carol's Florian Perez, our Met co director, has a few um, community and family events that are being planned for the fall. I think it's just some apple picking. Um, a thanks, they're going to they're organizing a Thanksgiving <laughs> feast um, that I, we think we'll do in Boston um, with families from Hingham and families in Boston. So some really great things coming this year. Yes. I should have mentioned it yep. earlier. Let me interrupt, but. Um, we're going to be partnering with uh, Kathy Lopes, who's a social worker from Metco Inc. headquarters, who's the Metco's director of equity and inclusion, uh, to support right. our work as we launch our equity and inclusion plan. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we met with her at the, um, at the conference oh, over the right. summer. Yeah, 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 yeah. she was yeah. very, she's, very she's wonderful. Yeah, very great. great. Oh, that's terrific. Thank you. So great things to come yeah. this year, that's for sure, out of, out of the work. Uh, and finally, I'll say the upcoming MSBA visit tomorrow, which has already been mentioned. I know, uh, Dr. Ed, you probably, uh, you plan to be there as part of the building committee um, for the town. I don't know if, if, Michelle, you're coming or not, but. I am not. Ed is going to be, he's going to wear two hats. He's going to represent us as a school committee and as our building committee yeah, representative yeah. to the. Excellent. To the building, yes. Excellent. Yeah. So I look forward to that. So yes. That's the end of my report. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Um, item five, communications. So um, I'll start with your communications, Dr. Sure. Austin. What I have for you, I, I, I just wanted to go over in your packet, there is a packet from the very busy uh, facilities department report. Uh, and, and just I'm going to highlight really the work that's planned ahead in September. And we've, we've done many things already, which, which is already we've talked about. But uh, in September coming up, we have the installation of a 700 by 4 foot fence uh, at East Elementary in order to provide safety and security to the back perimeter. We're going to rebuild the South Elementary heating system, pump, and motor system. Um, and uh, there's some other things on there. I have no idea what an addition of a VFD is, um, but maybe you Variable do. Variable frequency drive. Thank you. This is part of the Green um, Communities Initiative. We, we had a combination in our capital budget, sort of half from our capital budget and half from the Green Initiative um, to rebuild those pumps and then install VFDs. The VFD portion is the green community portion. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we are the MSBA study, uh, senior study visit at Foster is tomorrow, as I've already mentioned. Uh, East uh, Keyless Entry Softer is, is being updated. 
The Public Facilities Core Assessment of the Town Master Plan is scheduled for 924 at Central um, Office. And then the major annual uh, PM schedule for all emergency generator sets throughout the school department. Um, so lots of work to happen in September, and I uh, appreciate their work very much. So that's my communication on that. That's great. Yes. I have one question on the August. Um, it says that for the East Elementary that our insurance carrier has been notified. Um, doesn't the, the vendor have insurance and that their insurance should be covering um, well, this the, I mean, as we, opposed we to ours? Yeah, we would notify our insurance carrier and then any, um, you know, they will um, sort of work with the insurance carriers, uh, the, the vendor's insurance. They're not going to pay it if, um, you know, they won't, they won't pay it if, uh, if it turns out to be totally that vendor's fault. So, okay. Right. Yeah, so that's what I that, wanted to make sure that that was That's always what happens, like, being, we report yeah. it, okay. and then we don't really <coughs> have to, like, go directly to that carrier. That's why we have the insurance agent. They, they, they actually work that, and the insurance company will work with the other insurance company to make sure there's reimbursement and, okay. you know, the, the correct people are essentially paying for it. That's what I wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to add to that at all that I missed or didn't cover that you think is important, John? Um, no, I, I think um, that's 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 it. The, um, they they've been hard at work. Um, you know, nobody expects to have a flood on August 25th, and um, <laughs> you know the the state of the the building was not really good. You know, eight rooms were really lost, and the first floor was worse than the second floor. Mm -hmm. a, an amazing feat, if you if you had seen it. It's just uh, in my view, it's an amazing feat. Everybody um, just responded so quickly. Yeah. to get all that done in um, eight days, get school started, and, and then another four days for uh, the kindergarten, so. It was impressive. It's a great group. Um, you know, Kate, Katie and, and Doug and uh, Barbara Pye and that maintenance office deserve all the credit for it, for mobilizing and staying on these vendors and stuff. It's not like I'm out there all the time. Um, they're just keeping me posted. Yeah, that's great. They're doing great. A job. lot of bills to pay. I mean, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of there's a lot of back house stuff going on with it. Where you know the fire's not done and the flood's not done from a payment standpoint because you just got to get all the sign up. We'll be prepared when the locusts yeah. arrive. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but they're they're making it ready for the kids and the and the teachers. So right. that's that's all we care about, and we can catch up with the paperwork and the back end um, when we get there. All uh, right. Thank you. All right, thank you. We will welcome Emma Quilty back with Student Communications. Welcome back, Emma. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as summer came to an end, the freshman orientation was off to a very good start with over 350 new f incoming freshmen uh, to the school. And they, uh, after they went to each one of their classes, they went to the gym to look into the clubs that our school offers and then they enjoyed a nice barbecue outside and the student government provided over 60 volunteers to welcome and help them guide them to their class on that day and also in our cafeteria we added on a bulletin board the different clubs that you can join after um, the initial like activity fair that they could have joined them so that if they didn't get something then they can go back and look at it and they also added a new bulletin board outside the gym for all of the sports team schedules and there's a new poster for the Mamma Mia play in the cafeteria. So, um, and tomorrow night is freshman parents night at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. Um, the Hingham High School botany class and club have harv harvested lettuce and flowers um, and the lettuce will be eaten in our own cafeteria. Uh, and to continue with staying green, the football team completed the first slash the trash of the year. Uh, and on a sports front, the golf team joined the fight against all time, all, Alzheimer's disease and won all of their matches so far. Um, the football team beat Braintree. The boys and girls soccer beat Plymouth North on this past Friday. And the both boys and girls soccer team also beat Quincy today. Um, and while kids are hard at work, uh, Livy Cates, a biology, biology teacher at the high school, completed an Ironman. Ironman World in Nice, France this past weekend. Um, and lastly, the library will be open this upcoming Thursday for all students to sign up and access all the books as they're just finishing inventory. I wanted to say, uh, Emma, 
Congratulations on becoming one of the captains of the girls <laughs> soccer team. Thank you. I tend to be a little biased about soccer because that's the only really good sport that I understand everything about it. So. <laughs> Thank Good you. luck with everything. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much, Emma. Um, all right. Item 5.3, other communications. I think, Liza, did you want to just quickly fill us in on the master plan? Yes. So the master plan committee will be having our first meeting on September 18th. And um, one of the key objectives for the committee is to do community outreach. Um, so after our experience with the superintendent search, I plan to share a lot of what we did to help with that effort. Um, and one of the things I'm going to ask of the committee is to make sure we have a clear explanation of what a master plan is <laughs> and what the purpose of it is. Um, this is uh, required under Mass General Law for a town to have a master plan. And it really focuses on, for the next 10 years, what a community wants to look for um, in economic development, housing, land use plans, cultural and historic resources, open space and recreation, community services and facilities, transportation and circulation issues, sustainability, natural resources, water and energy issues. Um, I know the impacts of climate change is a key factor for Hingham, um, especially since we're on the water. Um, and there is a consultant that has been hired to assist with this process, and it'll be run through the community planning office. Um, and on the town website, they are going to be putting all well, the resources and the schedule of all the meetings posted on there. Um, if you look on the town website and search for master plan committee, it comes up. Um, and at the end of September, what the school department's going to participate with in the focus group of, of public facilities. Um, but they're having uh, various sort of focus groups um, for the staff in town hall and across the departments, as well as anyone from the public to be able to add more information to the consultants on a variety of subject matters. And that schedule is posted um, on the website. Um, I can pull it up. Um, so historic preservation, public facilities, transportation, open space, economic development, sustainability, water and energy, and land use. Um, those will be September 24th or October 9th, depending on the subject matter. Um, but then there'll be other open meetings to add input. Um, so we will maybe ask to use our communication methods um, through the schools to spread the message of all of this as well. Um, so I will report back after the first meeting. But it's underway. and see where our town takes us in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. I, I Great, like, thank you. Liz, I'm glad that you mentioned uh, about you guys are coming up with the definition of exactly what that entails. Perhaps you want to put a, a little you know, a disclosure there that that master plan has nothing to do with the uh, school's master plan because there seems to be a lot of confusion out there. Yes, and that's why I'm going to raise this at the meeting um, because a lot of different departments have master plans. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I, I, I agree that I think there's confusion over, and I think there's also people have said to me, isn't this about facilities in town? Um, what about town hall? What about a senior center? What about the schools? What about the library? And it's not a, it, it will include some facilities. Um, that's the consultant's response. And, covered that. Um, I think that's what the open session for public facilities is. Um, and Frank, I want to see all sa public safety facilities. There's no mention of where fire stations are going to go, and that's mm -hmm. been a big topic in town. That's impacted schools and um, for past right. reasons. Um, but if we're going to have growth, where are we putting these fire stations or ambulance? So. Um, so we'll see how that all goes, but yeah, I think 
clear, making a Make clear, clear definition will help people understand even yeah. what they're being asked to contribute to. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. That's did, great. Uh, Thank you. Did you see the uh, letter to the editor in this week's, well, I guess last week's journal? I did. Okay. Um, so I remind me to remind you to follow phone up. that person. But um, yeah. yeah, in the Hingham Journal, there was a letter to the editor, and the woman was asking for should there be a representative on the master plan committee from the schools and from the senior population. And town meeting voted for the schools to have representation, a school committee member. Um, and but this the seniors. I think they will be well represented from the people that are on the committee, but there's not specifically a senior center representative, but there are people from affordable housing and other departments. So, um, so we, the schools are represented for sure. Yeah. Um, and then uh, one other communication that we received. So uh, June Gustafson, president of the Hingham Education Association, has um, sent me a, a sent a letter on behalf of the Hingham Education Association units A and B, requesting that we commence the successor negotiations uh, for each unit contract. Um, so we will be putting together our team and and giving some possible dates and locations of when our team will be ready so I will get back to you within the next two weeks I think with the names um, and some dates and times if it's going to be longer than that I'll, I'll let you know but we'll endeavor to do that very shortly so thank you all right um, six point six uh, unfinished business 6.1 is to receive the revised superintendent goals for 2019 2020 and act as appropriate so those are in your packets um, that um, Dr. Austin has put together? Yeah, I, j just from the, the feedback I received last time, uh, and I tried to tighten that up a little bit better, um, I think most of it had to really around uh, that first professional goal, and uh, which I've done now to, to change that to, uh, to complete the year one of the new superintendent's induction program, um, which requires a formal induction plan and specifically designed to engage the community, et cetera. Um, were there, and I also made them smart goals uh, with key actions by June 30th of 2020, uh, et cetera, and the actions I'll do under each one. So I, I tried to incorporate what you had uh, given for feedback and, and uh, turn that back around to you. Um, questions, comments, thoughts on the goals as presented? Anyone? I think they're really good, and I'm also just going to say I'm glad you kept the mission statement as mm. part of goal number one, too. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important. So. Yeah. I would agree. Um, so anyone else have anything to add or consider, or do we want to consider adopting these as Dr. Austin's goals for <coughs> the year? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Do you want Make a motion if you are so inclined. I will inclined. make a motion to adopt um, the superintendent goals uh, for 2019-2020 um, fiscal year. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Adopted as is. Thank you very much for taking the time to revise those and setting them up. All right, uh, item 6.2, to receive an update on the hiring process for legal counsel and act as appropriate. Do you want to start us off, or Liza? I'm going to turn over Liza as the chair of salary and negotiations. Um, so as follow-up from our last meeting, um, our labor counsel has uh, announced its re his retirement, and so we've been in the process of interviewing new law firms to represent the school committee and the district. And on August 15th, um, we had a school uh, salary negotiation subcommittee with full participation of the full school committee. And we had five of seven school committee members with us. And we interviewed three firms that had been identified by the selection committee. Um, and we had very good interviews with all the firms. They all had. Um, great strengths and brought tremendous value to us and we agreed um, based on full services we narrowed it down to two firms 
And then we agreed that the administrative staff and myself and Carrie would do reference checking. And we contacted um, various communities that were from our 20 benchmark towns or were communities that the firms had significant work that they, and notable work and media wise notable work that they had and um, engaged in with the district um, and so based on that feedback um, and we've been working on it over the the two weeks um, we'd like to uh, make a recommendation and this is from the administration um, that we engage with Murphy Hesse Toomey and Lahane as our legal counsel um, we felt that they offer the level of support and expertise across all the different areas of law that, that we require, um, education law, mass general law, labor relations, uh, employment law, special education law, um, that, and they're also a local firm based in Quincy, so they're very accessible, and they have a um, large uh, council um, and large staff that will always be able to provide us with the resources that we need in a timely fashion as well. Um, so that has been the, Carrie, do you have anything to add since you called references uh, as well? No, just that it, 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 well, for both firms, there's very positive things that mm -hmm. we heard about it, but, um, but for this firm, um, it was really glowing. <laughs> so for the people that talked to, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, if don't mind, I'll make a motion. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll make a motion to enter negotiations with Murphy, Hesse, Toomey, and Lahane to serve as legal counsel for the Hingham School Committee and the Hingham Public Schools. Second. I'll second. Carrie. Okay. Um, any discussion? Questions? No? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Everyone? Okay, great. Terrific. Thank you so much. Sure. Follow up. Would you like me to contact them tomorrow and know and that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I can work with you on the um, next steps. Yep. Great. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. Great. Item 6.3 to hear an update from Long Range Planning Subcommittee regarding the purchase of a solar powered scoreboard for the varsity softball field at Hingham High School and act as appropriate. So I think there's information in your packet about this. That's right. So you have a couple of packages there. Um, you all remember that last month we discussed uh, this and we got uh, the school committee to approve um, that, that the business manager, uh, John Ferris, proceed to file the application for the waiver of, uh, of um, applying for the permit there. Uh, John uh, followed through the process of doing that. Um, and he has some update on that and in a few seconds for us. But before that, I just want to let you know that in, in terms of trying to be very transparent about the process, um, we actually posted a meeting uh, of the long-range planning at the field. Uh, that happened on, the, on August 27th. Um, and part of the agenda was that we would visit the neighbors. Uh, and we did that. Um, and uh, to, um, we, you know, we very... Um, we present to the neighbors, uh, two of them actually, um, uh, the, the, the package. Um, one of them was not home, but the one that right, it's right next to the um, girls' uh, softball field was home, took us to the yard. Uh, they really appreciated the fact that we took our time to go there and, uh, and showed them our intentions. Um, but they also showed us some uh, s uh, balls on the backyard, so, that, you know, um, just to highlight that balls still fallen in the yard. Uh, so, you know, uh, we had a very uh, great conversation, uh, and I think uh, they have no objection to what we're doing. I wanted to invite Nas and Dr. Schreier to say a few words before we pass on to John, if you'd like to add anything to yeah, what I said? I, I think you captured it. I think they were really receptive and um, excited that we, we went there to talk to them. And they were, um, they were grateful. Okay. Uh, one of the, just one of the neighbors that was not home ended up in Melanie. 
uh, and asking for further clarification. Uh, Dr. Shreya was kind <laughs> enough to go back and speak with her, and she was satisfied. Okay. So, John? And so, that's good. So, at the, uh, on a <clears throat> at, the, at the same time, I was working with the planning board, um, and I had gone through Mary Sab Dunham to see if we, uh, about, you know, what we would do for this waiver. Um, and as, um, so I completed the application, told her the action steps we would take, the, the fact that the scoreboard would be placed, where it would be placed, placed positionally. Um, the packet that I sent off is actually <coughs> in, 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 the, um, in, the, uh, in, in the packet on the, on the web anyways. Um, I explained to them uh, that the uh, Long Range Planning Committee had an open meeting at the site to visit the neighbors and, um, you know, to, to make sure that we addressed any concerns that they may have. Um, all those things took place, and then I, so I sent a draft off to Mary to say, is this completed? Um, and she looked and she saw that the price was below $20,000 and reached out to my Clancy to, to ask, you know, um, if this is under 20000 do they even need the um, site plan waiver? Um, so I went back and checked with her, and then we checked with Mike, and it determined that if the project is under $20,000, so there's no need for a site, um, site plan waiver. Okay, so we didn't have to uh, appear before the planning board tonight uh, where it would have been scheduled. Right. And then what we can do is we can go immediately to permit. Um, so, you know, based on the, um, and, and, and at that time too, uh, Ed and I actually had a conversation about the scoreboard that we initially had um, anticipated. You all have a picture of what the scoreboard would actually look like. Um, and the initial one that we had for that price of 167 was one with didn't have the Hingham High School logo at the top. And we were discussing that, and I just thought that, you know, if visitors are coming by, you know, it could be grandma, grandpa sometimes. Some people will know they're here playing Hingham, but if, if the grandparents come, they won't know, you know. But if they look up, they'll see it's Hingham High School. Every time I've gone to a game at, uh, at other fields, you know, I always see, oh, okay, well, at least I know where I am. I, I always know where I am, but some people may not. So I thought that, you know, we should probably get a quote for that. And the price still stays under the um, $20,000. The uh, revised price was, um, you have that form here, I think it was $17,710 yeah. $17, um, to in install that. And that would be coming out of the uh, in uh, the high school fields project account where there's a balance of uh, $148,000. And that account was established back when we did the field project. Um, and it was intended to be at the discretion of the school committee to provide enhancements um, to the field as, as they saw fit. And this certainly is, is an appropriate one, I think. It's, um, it's, it's the it's the girls' varsity softball field. I mean, initially it may not have been planned to be that, but it's in such better shape. The varsity chose to play there. Um, you know, we have we have um, scoreboards at the at the boys' fields and stuff. So, I mean, you know, it's it's it would be an equality thing. I think I think it's appropriate to put it there. This one we don't have electricity, so this is solar operated. Um, and you know, I recommend that the committee vote to, you know. Install this so the the vendor we would if, if the committee were to vote yes would contact the vendor the vendor would um, have to pull a permit um, through our building department and then we could get underway with the installation at um, this current updated price. Just want to add that uh, the committee uh, the subcommittee also discussed it on August 27th. Um, the fact that Liza had brought up the idea of uh, approaching the boosters. And uh, there was a consensus among the three of us that uh, we should not approach the boosters at this time just because there's a lot of the pipeline. Uh, we have gone to the boosters for a lot of items, and uh, we are prepared to go back to them for other uh, future, you know, um, projects. But that, you know, we feel comfortable that this money is set aside uh, there for items as such as this one, uh, and it is money that has been raised through the community. So uh, it would make sense to just, uh, you know, uh, go in and use the, the, the fund from the high school field fund. Um, that is a recommendation from the subcommittee. Um, which boosters 
boosters are you thinking of? Are you thinking of Softball boosters, specifically, uh, in general, or just we, uh, any any boosters. We said we had we had we agreed that we would not approach any boosters or any other group out there okay. at this stage. Um, I talked to the baseball boosters because I wanted to have an understanding of what they've contributed on their field. Yeah, no, baseball or softball. Baseball, because I have a concern of equity mm -hmm. that the baseball boosters have provided for their fields a tremendous amount of field enhancements. And s and now softball is asking for something. And when they came and asked, they even brought up, we would be willing to contribute to this. And so I was curious. I'm like, OK, I know baseball has contributed a lot. I, I want to get an idea. And um, so they have they confirmed that they've provided the foul ball um, posts uh, the batting cage they've also been raising they raised money last year that for the first time they did contribute to charity to lupus foundation but they also were raising money to put in dugouts because they don't have any dugouts um, and they need some kind of roof structure um, and so they, they haven't raised all of it, and they're still planning to work on raising more. Um, so that, this is why I made the request that we get a contribution because that, and then also I hear, I hear dugouts, and I'm thinking, that makes me think, okay, now the baseball team is going to raise money because they want dugouts. Then the softball team is going to come back and say, well, we want dugouts. And I just feel like this is, and with all the other priorities that we've said for the fields and that we have to do the turf, that this, I still feel, and now even more after talking to the baseball people and what they've put into their field, and we're not asking softball to do anything I don't think is fair. Um, and since we have a lot of other enhancements that could be done, this came out of one request and we're jumping on it. And we're not having a plan of what are all the enhancements that need to be done for the field. And we know the turf carpet has to be done in a couple of years. Um, so that, that's why I'm bringing up about getting equity. Um, I, I, I really feel that for, we haven't had any other enhancements except for what boosters have added themselves to the property that I know of, except regrading it, which we've done out of the regular budget. So um, I think 17.7 is a big ticket to, to take out of that fund when there's a lot of other things that could be considered and we're not considering them. So so, so just for information, to realize that uh, why would, you know, Doing the outreach to the neighbors, they brought to their attention that perhaps we would consider, we should consider also putting a net in. Uh, if you look at the uh, fresh May uh, soccer uh, field, um, you know there is a net in that you know you, you're able to you know close and open to prevent the balls from falling to the parking lot for safety issues. They ask if we'd kindly. Uh, you know, I also consider putting one of those nets there because uh, by the time the softball, you know, comes to the yard, is actually coming l by the fence there. That's where I broke the, you know, the window. Uh, so we will be looking into that as well. So, you know, for something like that, we definitely would reach out to the boosters. Uh, but, you know, sticking to the inequity uh, issue, there's a major ma uh, matter of equity. All the other fields already have the scoreboards. The girls' softball field doesn't, so that is another reason why we wanted to address this. Uh, right I, away. Under I understand that, but the the fields that were there, they all got scoreboards. Mm -hmm. Not that when one. the plan was done, when the fields were done, they all got the scoreboards. So, well, I mean that. Then you get freshman baseball is further back on that same field. Are they going to ask for a scoreboard now? You know, once we put the softball one in, I, I so guess if they had it, a scoreboard, where did the scoreboard go? If they had, if all the fields had a scoreboard, 
how come they don't have a scoreboard now? Is it because they moved the field? Yeah. They weren't going to use that as the varsity field okay. at the time. So what happened okay. was when the when the uh, when we did the field development uh, and John can jump in on this and he's told me he scratched his head on this but the decision was made in my sense by the former athletic director to leave what was then the varsity girls softball field alone that's the field that has the, the scoreboard right now and the reason I think was that if it was done at the initial there would have been no softball for the girls when the field then was developed across the street with a brand new uh, dugouts and brand new benches and brand new cages uh, obviously that's what we're talking about tonight so that that's a bit of the background I, I appreciate us providing a scoreboard for a varsity field. I understand that. My issue is that it's such a large cost. It's significantly more. And we have other costs, and it's just come out of, just because come, somebody came and asked for it, and it's been on no plan. And I could understand it if we were getting <coughs> contribution for it so that it lowers our costs. But now you're telling us, telling me, you're not going to bother. I no, that's personally, not, that, that's I don't not what think Carlos said. What Carlos said was that th the decision of the three of us was not to approach the boosters at this point with the very clear understanding that the boosters' doors will be knocked on in the future for other big ticket items. I don't consider this to be. Compared to what we're looking at, which you've mentioned, this is not a big ticket item. Um. So, well, so I, uh, well, I can, I can we'll let you know, and, and, and we'll look forward to your help when it comes time for the, for the, uh, the replacement of the rug, among other things, because that will be a big ticket item. That was my so thing. I've been asking for a plan for the replacement of the rug since the day we put the rug down. <laughs> so I'm all for having a plan for replacing the rug. Um, but there's, I, there's, I, there's a point that I completely agree with you. Yeah. I, my issue is that this came out of nowhere. It's a chunk. We've asked out all the other boosters to contribute, or they volunteered to contribute. And I think we should have a plan of how we spend our money. And so that, that's, that's where I am. So sorry. So for a little more background, especially for some of us new <laughs> members. So the fund this comes out of is our funds that were set aside X number of years ago for for <coughs> items such as have we ever, so have we because I thought Liza said we've never used that fund before to uh, we have we have not used that fund. Uh, we use that fund just to do a, a small <laughs> study on the existing softball field. Okay. The, the, the B field, the, the one that the JVs used. Um, but other than that, it was all raised money by the public, you know, uh, raised money from, you know, donors. Um, and it, there was a combination of when we did that project, so much funding from the town and then so much from the donations, okay? And by the time we value added everything, there was this money yep. left over. And then donations continued to come in. And when they did, they would, they would go into that fund. So but what was the purpose of the fund? For it, it was the high school, Hingham High School field projects. Uh, and it was, it, a public it was intended, it was public built private to partnership. for enhancements Understood now. for the school committee yep. to do enhancements to the field as they saw fit. That's, oh, and also that some contributions were, were committed, they were pledges over time, so that we didn't even have the cash on hand because the pledges, so now we have the money, right? Yep. right to, yeah. People so. pledged and then paid as many as two years later, three years later? Um, That's why there's a balance, because the money yeah, came I think, in I think after some of them were longer than three. I, I couple years. I'd have yeah. to go back yeah. to the notes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How much is in this fund? $148,000. Okay. okay. Still have 130 left. So these are funds raised out in the community, so not from taxpayer dollars. No. That 
private funds that came in for the school and then they intended it, it, intended for the use of the field of the fields and the school it's nice to have a buffer right and the school committee had the discretion of being the ones who got to decide that's correct when that's and when, where and when that money was spent okay it was a particular it was a special account that we set up at that time of the field and you know with that uh, that definition um, you know for enhancements to mm -hmm. the field <clears throat> okay. does the athletic director um, have an opinion on this so as far as whether, whether it's a good use of this money and as far as what the plan would be going forward because I, 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 he, do, he I, does I, indeed I sat down with uh, with the uh, Coach Green, that's the girls' varsity softball coach, and I'm, I met uh, both Coach Green and Coach Q, our athletic director. Right. Uh, both were on board with the idea, on board with the location, and 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 I can say unequivocally, they were both very enthusiastic about this. But I guess uh, the bigger so li to Liza's point about um, you know we don't want things just popping up you know well now we want a, you know a batting cage or wh whatever is is there some sort of plan long term as to how do you, how to use this money and what the and basically for the facilities because it seems like uh, you know this booster is raising money for this sport and this one for that and I mean we d it is an issue of equity so is there a, is there a plan. I don't think that well, right. no, that's a right now. So I think that I know. So I think right. Just so people so know, I, I I, I, I've, the I've heard the term batting come cage come up twice. Ago, Th there are two batting cages there already, so there won't right. be any more batting cages. There's one in varsity um, baseball, and there's one between the freshman baseball and the varsity softball. So the batting cages are signed, sealed, and delivered. But on the batting cages. That was raised by the boosters, correct? I, I, yeah. I don't know that. I, 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 we I, didn't I, fund it. I didn't, yeah. you know, I, I didn't fund but it. The, but the sign wasn't. The signs were given by the town. The town. Yeah. And that's where I think about the equity. Yeah. I think yeah. about, right. the, and I understand the change in the field. They wanted to go across the street because it's a better field. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the equity is that they should have the same sign that we've given to the baseball team. Mm -hmm. And the football team and the other and varsity right, sports, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and I'm very comfortable ab about, you know, taking the money from the, where the fund is because at the end it is the money raised for the, this type of purpose. So if you're going back to the community to ask for additional money, why, why we already have money set aside, it just doesn't make any sense. Right. I think Liza's point is, but how, why this particular sport when other sports haven't come to us for to use this this money so why all of a sudden are we the I, I oh, right the, yes I, no no i think the realization was some parents of varsity girls softball who did well mm -hmm. were at the game at the varsity field which is if you haven't seen it it's a lovely it's a it's it's, it's beautifully uh, built out um and realized hey this is our varsity team. There's no scoreboard here. And, and rather than consider it to be a spontaneous, well, we need this, it was an oversight, to be perfectly honest about it. Where's the scoreboard? Wow, there is no scoreboard. Well, no, we talked about it, but at the time, it needed the solar, and that was too expensive to be able to do that, from what I remember. That. So, I mean, yeah. uh, Margaret got an, uh, got an uh, as you all know, Margaret got a quote, and and why it, when, why it wasn't followed through, I I can't, I don't know. Do you know, John? Uh, yeah, like I said, it came up a couple of years ago. Yeah, but and it, it was just any traction. out of sight, out of mind. I, right. Had I been asked to work on it, I would have, and I wasn't, so I didn't. <laughs> right. So, I, I mean, I think there are two issues here one is this very particular issue about this and I'm sort of understand the committee's the subcommittee's recommendation of if our if all of our varsity sports have a scoreboard then for the girls varsity softball team not to have a scoreboard regardless of the reason whether because they move fields or they didn't move fields does seem like that is not equitable um, but I think the second point of it is I think there's a larger discussion that this committee has to have along with our administration and our schools about 
how are we funding these things, right? How are we being equitable? Why does the drama club have to, why do those parents have to pay to upgrade the sound system, right? Why does the yeah. baseball boosters yeah. have to pay for this, but then this? So I think that is a way bigger conversation mm -hmm. that we have to have as a, not only as a committee, but as a community as well, right? How, where, where, where is it appropriate for those funds to come from? The, the taxpayers, the individuals, and how are we going to, to do those? Um, so I, I think there are sort of two issues here that we need to tackle. One of them we can definitely tackle tonight. The other one I'm going to save for another, <laughs> another <laughs> meeting. Um, but With that, that's just what I'm thinking. I'm ready to make a motion. I'll make a motion to um, authorize the business manager um, to proceed with um, applying for the permit to install the solid powered scoreboard at the Gauss, uh, the Vasily Gauss softball field, and to spend the amount of. Um, John, is this number correct? This is the $17,710. $17,710. Seventeen $17, I check on that. Thank you. All right. Further discussion? All right. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you all. All right. So we are approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so we will. That is, I think, one thing that we're going to add to our planning meeting to discuss oh, ease true. and the like. Absolutely. So. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Um, all right, on to new business. Uh, 7.1 to receive the proposed school committee special reports calendar for 2019-20. So we have established our meeting schedule for the year, and now we are, this is just for um, everyone to review. Um, for uh, when, when the special reports will be delivered to the school committee. I don't think we have to approve those. We're just receiving, no. and we're just receiving mm -hmm. the report. So, everybody good? I have a question. Yes? Uh, December 18th is a Wednesday and doesn't coincide with the school committee meeting unless I am made a mistake. Oh, it should be the 16th, yes. 16th. Is that a typo? Maybe? It must be a typo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 So we... December 16th. December 16th. Okay, so we'll make that change. Good if Heather Rodriguez is listening. <laughs> is <laughs> so if Heather Rodriguez is listening, we will be on December. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll have Pam and then update this. <laughs> Any other <Libby>. dates? <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. Thank you for catching that, Libby. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, item 7.2 to receive the fall 2019 high school coaching recommendations. So those are also in your packet. The ones in red are new additions to the coaching staff. The ones with an asterisk, I think, are coach has worked for the department. Red asterisk, they've worked for the department, but this is a new assignment for them. Okay. Um, any Questions, I, I wanted to this? ask uh, Dr. Austin um, if you had an opportunity to have any meetings with the coaches of all um, of the different sports. I have not yet. That is on my agenda. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely want to do that. I have not yet. So just you know, I think that would be very important that yeah. you know, as, as I keep saying, you know, um, the extra curri curriculum activities. You know, it's a plus to the academics. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'd love to see how the coach has been mentored by somebody like yourself and to make sure that they are actually um, trying to be as positive as they can and mm -hmm. try to be more encouraging and motivating the, ch the, the kids. We shouldn't be playing the sports just to win. We should be giving a chance to those individuals that were, were selected to be part of the team to play. We hear a lot of complaints that the individuals have been selected to play and they are not given opportunities. So, you know, if you could help us in making sure that mm -hmm. the coaches understand that, that would be great. I will say that I have met a large majority of the coaches and the staff, which I, uh, but I have not gone into that detail. Thank Absolutely. You. 
Um, any questions, thoughts, comments on the coaching recommendations? Um, sorry, I forget if we need to act on this or is this no, are no, there no, the no, recommendations and then need to act on just to it's our okay. okay yeah all right thank you um 7.3 to review plans for the september 22nd 2019 school committee planning meeting that is in a couple of sundays from now um starting at eight eight to eleven, eight right? to 11. yes eight to 11. Not 11.01, 11 a.m., 8 to 11. I'll say it every time, but this time it's going to happen. Um, so, anyway, so we need to we need to start playing that. So we, it's a very small window of time that we have to, um, to discuss our plans for the school year. Um, one thing that I was thinking about, and it's Dr. Austin's first one, John and Jamie are old hands at this, uh, Fun weekend meeting that we have, and Dr. Venice was here. I think last you attended last year. Yeah. Um, if people are in agreement, one thing that I think I would like to have at this meeting, and not to take up a lot of times, but I would love if the um, chairs of the su subcommittees could ahead of time maybe come up with like a two or three sentence sort of vision mission statement for their committee for the year. Um, I think that would be sort of helpful so people understand what sort of their goals, for, I shouldn't say vision, sort of what your go top three goals are for the year in your particular subcommittees, if that makes sense. Um, but other than that, I didn't have any, I'm open to suggestions for what folks would feel is important to bring up. I'm feeling fees might be one of those topics of conversation. Um, but. How about administration? What do you what what would you like to get out of this meeting that particular day? Do you I'm going to defer to a minute because we really haven't talked much. Yeah, about no, that's good. The and so I look to you guys and say in the past, what's our focus been and and we could also keep this very broad I, yeah. for tonight's purposes and sort of say if we have three hours. I'd like to know you what your budget priorities are for the okay. 2021 budget because that's the, that's a very important meeting for me. That okay. 20, that, that that school committee planning meeting that we have in September, where you folks said you know, said here's where we we want to go, mm -hmm. and here's what our priorities are likely to be for 2021 because in October I'm going to start building the 2021 budget. Okay. Okay, and then we won't really have more opportunity to sort of <coughs> go through that. So. Right. That's always it's always really important to me that we, um, you know, we discuss that and then you know they discuss the what we might do with full day K yeah, or the offsets or a lot of a lot of items relative to what the budget impact of whatever you decide at that meeting would be, you know, the financial impact. That's what I'm always yeah. looking at. Okay. All right. Yeah. Talk about equity. I mean, we just had the whole yeah. presentation about it and what we should be, what we should all be doing to kind of move that forward. Mm -hmm. And I was also just thinking about it too, and just we can talk about it more later. But just also how you know it's it's a community effort. It's not just the schools. It can't be. So yeah. like, how do we pull in the community too? Um, so mm -hmm. okay. All right, uh, Michelle. I was yeah. Not only what role do you want us to play in the equity, as right. Carrie said, but on the other initiatives, the um, technology, the website, what do you want us to play a role in that? And then how does that translate to the budget? Um, I think we should have a conversation about um, outside funding, whether it's fundraising, um, fees, Kindergarten tuition, I mean, all those yeah. things. Um, you know, what fees have we been charging? How often should we raise them? And we keep kicking the can down on the athletic fee in the high school. We haven't <coughs> raised that in six years now, I think it's going on. Um, but then, you know, we have all these outside groups who are raising money. Do we want how do we want to marry all of this right. together? What are all the things we want in our district? And 
do we should we be paying for them flat out or do we charge <laughs> right, you know, exactly. and, and or do we just establish a process of talking about this issue right um, so but I think we should begin that process because you know even with the budget and, and I think we should put foster school yep. on that too mm -hmm. in Plymouth River of what are all the ways we're going to the community asking for money um, I think it'd be good for us to get our hands around even getting the list down. <laughs> right, I know, exactly. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, all right, that's great. Yeah. I, I think the idea of, a sub of a, each of the subcommittees coming up with their top three uh, concerns or issues is a, is a real good idea. But I, I'm hoping that we'll have time for an individual who may not be on a specific subcommittee yes. to have an issue that would fall into somebody else's turf yep. rather than just be locked into. Yes. You know. I'm with you. I understand so what you're I don't saying. Yes. There's not a lot of time there, and it's easy I know. to. <laughs> but and I think maybe. Have some time for individuals yeah. that. Uh, okay. And, and Michelle, to uh, Dr. Shreya's uh, point. Sorry. We don't have much time before the 22nd, and uh, I don't think we'll be able to have a meeting to seek the input of uh, 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 each other, right. and we would not be able to communicate via email. So since we are here together, uh, or perhaps we can think about it and then discuss on the day of the meeting, but uh, I don't know how we can discuss this without having a meeting, you know what I mean, the three of us on the subcommittee. Uh, or your subcommittees, right? I mean, how are you going to? We're meeting tomorrow, so. <laughs> oh, you're meeting right. tomorrow, good for you. <laughs> um, which is fine. I mean, it's. Uh, well, how about you, you just ask the chairman of the various subcommittees, yeah. who yeah. obviously yeah, that's what I was know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. pretty much what's, what's going on to this point, right? to give their th top three priorities, and then, and then maybe let the other members kick in. Right. How's that sound? Yeah. Yeah. That could work. That could. Al I think this also the subcommittee goals could probably also just naturally tie into budget priorities mm -hmm. and equity and fees as well. So I think but we the more of the program that you can have down in paper, right. the better it's yes. going to be. Uh, no, <laughs> absolutely. Um, no, those are really great suggestions uh, for topics. Um, and I mean, it's a lot. We have three hours, but mm -hmm. um, I think if people are inclined that. Dr. Austin and I can work together to set up a format and get a time frame and um, <coughs> you know, sort of allocate a specific amount of time. So I'm thinking um, budget priorities, two hours and 59 minutes. And, then <laughs> 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 and I'll have one minute, minute to do the rest of it. <laughs> um, but no, we'll figure out how to sort of br break it up into time so that we can get a lot accomplished that day. Okay, all right, terrific, thank you. So thank you. we'll be in touch. Um, all right, so 7.4, thank you. Uh, to declare as surplus approximately 200 biology textbooks, 68 chemistry textbooks, 25 VCRs at HHS, uh, 21 VCRs at Foster School, and various obsolete audiovisual equipment at Hingham High School, and to dispose of them at the least cost to taxpayers. John? This must be a Hingham activity this week. Now you've got <coughs> 200 biology textbooks. I'd like to give you three. <laughs> and you've got 68 chemistry textbooks. I'd like to add in two. Joyce <laughs> has been going. <laughs> I'm not making that up. <laughs> you know, over the summer, the directors, they, they start cleaning house, and, yeah. and Katie Roberts uh, identified these uh, integrated texts for science. And I says, okay, well, let me know what they are. And, you know, I took them over the summer. And, and then also, um, uh, Dan, um, identified the various um, audiovisual equipment so you know and they're, they're on a list so and we all know about the VCRs the VCRs but the insurance company we requested that we remove them we did remove them so now we want to just dispose of them and you know since they were purchased through taxpayer money we should um, you know ask for a declaration of surplus by the school committee so that we can um, probably dispose of them um, I know the uh, uh, this just this week a couple of other items have popped up which I'll give you maybe next week but I think sailboats they're looking at um, uh, declaring a few other sailboats surplus because they're going to replace them with some other new ones 
they did that a couple of years ago, and I think they still have some money in a gift account, which they'll subsidize with. I think it's a sale in boosters. I mean, all that all that was purchased with gift money anyhow. Um, and then I, I heard from uh, Megan Melanson today about some uh, phys ed bikes that probably will be declared surplus. But that's not today. That's just, you know, forewarned for um, the next, uh, next, next meeting. But for this one here, there's um, three. There's the VCRs, the biology, the, the books, and um, the audiovisual equipment. None of it has any value. The books are too old. Um, <coughs> the audiovisual equipment, I mean, we probably all have that stuff lying around our house, too. It's <laughs> better to get it declared surplus before you throw it away instead of just throwing it away. So I, I don't want to, I want to make sure that when people say, hey, I got this stuff, can I just throw it away, that I tell them, no, you can't throw it away, and you have to go through a process for it. It's good control for the field. All right. That's it? That's it. So okay. there's that. Uh, might put some words down if you want to take so, those. Yeah. So, John, uh, do I have to uh, mention each item at a time and vote on? Um, I, I think some of the language that I put on this sheet, Carlos, okay. probably would, would okay. cover it all. Let's, let's follow that then. All right. I would like to make a motion to declare surplus of approximately 200 biology textbooks uh, uh, and direct the director of business and support service to dispose of, the, of them at the least cost to the Hingham taxpayers. Okay. All that discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion to declare a surplus of approximately six <coughs> uh, 68 chemistry textbooks um, and direct the director of business and support service to dispose of them uh, for that least cost to the Hingham taxpayers. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion to declare a <coughs> surplus of 25 VCRs at the Hingham High School and 21 VCR at Foster School and direct the, business, the Director of Business and Support Service to dispose of them at the least cost to the Hingham taxpayers. Second. Questions? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to make a motion to declare supplies of various audio video equipment as detailed on the enclosed list and direct the Director of Business and Support Service to dispose of this equipment at the least cost uh, to the Hingham taxpayers. Questions? Uh, all, right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you, John. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Um, then in your packets, items 7.5, 7.6, 7.7 are three homeschool applications for consideration. Um, so are, that information is all in your packets. So, no, yes. Does someone want to oh, sure. make a motion? Just then a second. Um, I'd like to make um, a motion. You can, sorry. Let's do them all at once. Yes, all at once. I'd like to make a motion to accept the homeschooling application of Emmett Doran, grade 2, um, for the 2019-2020 school year. Uh, Cosette <coughs> Yukton, grade 10, um, for the 2019-2020 school year, and uh, Annalise Ling, grade 2, for the 2019-2020 school year. Second. Thank you, Liza. Any discussion? Yes, sir. In, in years past, we've had some observations from the superintendent. Have we, are, are we received a uh, the packages. programs from these parents and, and, yeah. and yes. they have your blessing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Carlos. Um, I think our principals already went through all the people that have been hired and moved <laughs> around from the various <laughs> schools, so we're just going to say <laughs> 7.8, 7.9. 7.10, 7.11, 7.12. Uh, we have numerous um, appointments, um, new additions to staff, advancements on the salary scale, um, leaves of absence, and a few resignations. So welcome to our newest members of the Hingham Public School family, and thank you um, to, our, to those who are resigning. We
appreciate all you've done for our schools. Um, item number eight, other items says may not reasonably known 48 hours in advance. Does anyone have any 48 hour items? No? Terrific. Mm -hmm. Item number nine, subcommittee and project reports. I will start with Ness if you have anything. Mm -hmm. um, I have East School, the school council meetings are going to be happening late September, early October. Um, they're having a PTO meeting this week. And a back to school bash on 920, which is a carnival, games, inflatables. Um, looking forward to attending that. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. Um, and then community outreach, we have a meeting September 17th. Um, and we have, I have the Metgo liaison. Um, Carol's had reached out to Michelle and I to set up a meeting to discuss the program there. So we will report back on that. Yes, I, I, I copy. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we'll yeah. set up some time to meet. So it's a new position, so we're going to meet to discuss what our vision is for this liaison role. All right, Libby. Uh, just to report that community outreach will meet again on September 17th at 8.30 a.m. And the first HEF meeting will be on the same day, September 17th at 7.15 p.m. Great. Thank you. Liza? Um, salary negotiations I already reported, but we will need to schedule a meeting in the very near future to get together. Yes. Um, Ed? Uh, we were contacted by, uh, by three booster parents uh, about the, uh, the concession stand. Um, I put together a, uh, a meeting with uh, two, member, two members of the Hingham Sports Partnership, three or four booster parents. John attended and, and I did as well at this point two Fridays ago. Um, and I'll just say that it needed some uh, field day, uh, put together an organization with, uh, spent a lot of time this past week, you know, trying to really get to the bottom of the organization and I'll hopefully we'll have a real report as to uh, how the whole thing will be organized going forward. Uh, I was back on Saturday uh, with a uh, field day with, uh, with several parents. Uh, we went back and took the trash out uh, and I'm very happy to report that it's that it's clean as a whistle. Okay. And although I didn't go Sunday, it was used Sunday by the football boosters. Saw some pictures and they had a great day. Okay. Yeah. Um, we did not get to finish our conversation about that, but I do have a suggestion that I will Shoot. throw in your side. Uh, we'll, oh. we'll do it offline. As a former person who used to yeah. use that concession stand for various fundraising <laughs> activities. <laughs> um, but I'll call you about it. Uh, Carrie? Uh, policy is meeting tomorrow at 1.15. Policy tomorrow. All right. Thank you. I think uh, long range planning uh, said enough, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I do want to say that our, our three items that we think is a huge priority uh, that we already have said is foster. It is the windows at Plymouth River mm -hmm. and is the master plan that we will address all the items, uh, a couple of improvement that we need to address in the next 10 years. Okay, great. Just want to make, make sure. sure I put it so out there. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> take so I, don't have, I don't have to yeah. come anymore. I don't have to <laughs> come. Yeah. I'm all set. He stopped to come. All right, awesome. Thank you. Um, special Ed Subcommittee, uh, I sent an email earlier to Dr. Austin and Dr. Venice. So I think. Um, if you would like to join us, that would be great. But also, Dr. Vindis and I were just going to sit down and sort of just go over what what's the best way that we think that the subcommittee can help the special ed department reach their goals, and then talk about just logistics about what you know what how often should we meet, what times are best, you know, are the <coughs> daytime meetings or the evening meetings, um, how, you know, how we work with CPAC. So if um, my fellow su subcommittee members don't mind, Dr. Vinnis and I will sit down and then the three of us will have a meeting very, very soon. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. That is all I have for subcommittee and project reports, unless anyone else. Um, so with that, I would accept a motion to adjourn if someone would be so kind. I'll That's make a motion point. to adjourn. Second. I'll second. Thank you, Libby. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.